All right, welcome everyone to Advent to Code 2020. Day one will be getting here in just a bit. If you are just here for my solution, my answer, there'll be a, a timestamp or the, a different YouTube chapter you can skip ahead to. If you are new to Advent to Code, don't know what it is, feel free to stick around as I will explain it here. For those of you who don't know, I stream live on Twitch, which is what I'm currently doing right now. So we're streaming over there at Twitch, twitch.tv slash turkeydev. Go ahead and follow me there, check me out there. So you'll see uh, as I do these different days, the theme might change. Some of them I might do live on Twitch when they get released. Some I might do off stream and just do them there. So the kind of video that you see here layout might change depending on whether I'm streaming or not. But anyways, for those who don't know what Advent to Code is, every year for the month of December as an Advent calendar, there are programming challenges on adventtocode.com. The days get progressively harder. Day one is usually pretty easy to do for kind of beginners or really anyone getting into coding. Day one is usually doable by anyone. Day two gets harder and they do kind of ramp up pretty fast after that. So day one, like I said, is beginner level. Day two is how you get closer to intermediate. Day three is for sure intermediate. Day four is getting harder and harder and harder. I would say about by day 10 or so, you're actually getting into pretty difficult problems. Uh, but again, this is I've, my second year doing it, so I'm only basing it off of last year's, so I don't know for sure whether or not that's true, but that is my kind of opinion is what I got from last year. So so like I said, I will be streaming some of these on Twitch. All my videos will be going to YouTube, so I'm going to be doing day one through whatever I can get to. Last year I got to about day 17 before I kind of just couldn't solve them anymore. I'm a pretty good programmer, but when it comes to some sort of math problems and programming problems in this capacity, I'm not always the best. So. I'll be going from as far as I can go, hopefully all 25 days, but we'll see. Um, I might not get to all 25 days, I will have a vacation later on, but it's fine for right now. So I will be doing these YouTube videos for all my days. I won't be releasing the video until about eight hours after, so about 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I'll release these videos, assuming I do it that night. If I don't do that night, the video will come out just whenever I finish the project or whatever the day's challenge is. So. The reason why I'm doing that is just so that way I don't post the video too quick and people kind of don't do it for themselves. So hopefully by delaying it eight hours or so, it at least gives people a chance to try it without kind of cheating going straight to my videos. So so I do have some base code. Uh, for, so for these Advent to Codes, I do have some base code here that I'll be using. Um, basically, it's just a system I set up that way it auto loads files. I can just dump things into this res folder and it'll auto load the correct day. Um, and provide the input from that file here. It's just a convenience thing for me. You could not easily do this without it. But every day that isn't Advent to Code, every day has an input that you need to then run through your solution. And at the end, you'll get an output and you'll put that output into Advent to Code. And if it's right, you've done the code correctly or you've gotten the question done enough to where it's correct. If it's wrong, you gotta go back in through and fix your code and do all that. So, all right, chat. 10 seconds here we'll get the th we'll get the question we can then read it and then we'll go ahead and code a solution i'm not trying to get to the leaderboard but who knows maybe one day we do all right day one here after saving christmas five years in a row you've decided to take a vacation at a nice resort on a tropical island surely christmas would go on without you the tropical island has its own currency and is entirely cash only nice the gold coins you use there have little picture of a starfish. The locals just call them stars. None of the currency exchanges seem to have heard of them, but somehow you'll need to find 50 of these coins by the time you arrive so that way you can pay the deposits on your room. Uh, to, save, to save your vacation, you get all 50 stars by December 25th. Book stars by solving puzzles. Uh, okay, this is just what Lumdare is, or the Advent Code is. Um, before you leave the elves in counting, just need you to fix your expense report. Your puzzle inputs, apparently something isn't quite adding up. Specifically, they need you to find the two entries that sum up to 2020 and then multiply those two numbers together. For example, suppose your is the following. Unless the two entries that sum to 2020 are that and that, multiplying them together produces the correct answer is that, of course. Okay, let's get our puzzle inputs. So this can probably, well, so the easy way to do this, or the kind of brute force way to do it is to take every option, nice. Um, hold on a second. So the brute force way to do this is simply just to take every element in your list, go through, say, say in this case, say 17, 21, go to the next element, add them together, are they 20, 20? No, go to the next number, 17, 21 plus 
366, add the other to the 2020, no, and just keep going through it that way and that way until you find the two entries in that list that are together. Um, I'm not sure if there's a better way to do it. That's the way I'm gonna do it. Just, it's a brute force, but it works. Um, as we wait for the, <laughs> the input. So I guess we can wait for the input. We don't need the input right away to do this. So again, we're gonna go through our inputs. So we're gonna have a bunch of different lines of our inputs. Um, we're going to go through them all. So it's gonna be for string S and input. Actually, you can make this a little bit faster. And the way you can do this, you can just literally start, or you can do a one list that goes from zero to your input. So zero while I is less than input dot size. I plus plus, and our next one can go from the next element and go through. So that way you're not doing duplicates. So you're not going from zero to say five in this case, and then zero to five and checking those over. You're not getting duplicates. You're going from zero to five or zero to five. And the inner one's going from one to five. And the next loop is going to go from um, two, starting to be an element two, and you're going to go from then two to five. It's, I've explained that terribly, but hopefully it, yeah. So the outer loop is going to go from zero to our input size, but the inner loop is only going to go from whatever our I value is plus one. And then it's going to go for the same amount. And this way we get no duplicates. We don't get any that are the same, any of all that. That would make the sum 20. That's, that's sort of what we're doing code wolf. We just don't know which one it's going to be though. Um, so we're going to have to do cast two integers. I could change this, but whatever. Uh, integer um, i1. This is going to be int1. It's going to be input get i. And we got to cast, we're going to change this to integer. So integer parse int here. And then our second integer is going to be our j value. So integer 2 is j. And then we're gonna do um, we're gonna store these out here. Um, answer two. So we're going to quickly check if int one. Actually, we don't even need to do this. We can just kind of ignore this. We can do int one plus int two equals twenty twenty. If that is the case. We can just simply do system out print line and we can do int one times int two. Uh, let's make this a little pretty. We can do answer. And then we can just return. Kills it there. It, good enough, I guess, um, for day one. Do I get my uh, puzzle input yet? Well, so in theory, they should be done. All right, let's let's try to let me try to do this a better job of explaining how this is working. Initiating is wrong. Twenty twenty. Thank you. All right, let me do a little try to do a better job of explaining. So we have our list of numbers here, right? Now the easiest way is to go through and say is seventeen twenty one plus. 979 equal 220. No. Okay, let's take 17921 plus 366. Is that 220? No. 1721 plus 299, is that 220? Yes, but say no. So we can do that and we just go through every one. Now, if we had just done two for loops going from zero to our input size, we would have been doing some doubling up. Uh, we would have been doing, in the first case, 1721 plus 1721. Now, we don't want to do that anyway, so we can sure add a check for that the integers or the indexes aren't the same, sure. But now what we have the issue is now we're going 1721 plus 979, no, and then we're gonna go through the rest of them. And then our outside or outside for loop is gonna to change to index of one. So it's now gonna be 979, but our inside for loop is gonna to change to zero again. And we're gonna go through 979 plus 1721, check again, even though we've already tried them. So to avoid that, we just make our inside for loop one more than our outside for loops index. That way we get 1721, try these all four or all five of these against it. That doesn't work. Then we go to 979. We check 979 against the remaining four. It has not been checked against 
and continues on with 366 only being checked against these three, 299s only being checked against these two, and so on and so forth. So that way, we're only checking for non-duplicates, and we're kind of making as little, we're making this as simplified and as efficient as possible for this case. I have my input yet. Hey, wow, okay. That's a lot of numbers. <laughs> So this is maybe where it would become the case of, hey, is it, there are 200 numbers here. Efficiency may be, might be needed. So uh, let's go ahead and run this. Do we get an answer? It's still trying to load. And we get, this is our answer. If we plug this in, submit. Hey. Anyways, on to part two. There are two parts to all these questions, by the way. Elves and Gumdine, thank you full for your help. One of them even offers you a starfish coin that they left over from the pacification. Um, I'll offer you a second if you can find three numbers in your expense report that meet the same criteria. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. Now we're just gonna add a third for loop. Same principle. This third for loop is going to be the exact same, but instead of it being I plus one, it's now going to be J plus one. Again, avoiding duplicates. Um, K, I guess, we'll do K. Avoiding the exact same issue with these duplicates. K plus int three. And multiply them all together. Run this again, we should get a new answer. And we dump this into our submit. There we go. We complete day one. So there we go. Hopefully that has made some sense to you guys. Hopefully that has helped you out in understanding how this all works. Again, this this day one is very easy if you're a new programmer. If you're just getting to programming this day, this question is a very good one to help you learn, especially learn for loops. You don't have to make these um, efficiency improvements. Any computer should be able to run this just fine without these efficiency improvements. But this day should at least really get you to get better at knowing how to run for loops and how to check lists and do less math. So anyways, that's my day one. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys all tomorrow for day two and peace out.